Hey everybody, welcome back! Thought I was only gonna do one video today, but I'm feeling I'm feeling good. I did the the requisite um Judas' Shadow, dude. That's oh we had Eden's Blessing on the last run. Zero MMB. Nine. Nope. That's not a nine, that's an R. R M E nine. Okay, hold on. <laughs> hold on, dude. So I think we should definitely Okay. That uh, didn't go the way I planned, but that's our stats are so good. So I definitely want to become Dark Judas. I would prefer to do it um, by using the IV bag to get some money. I would also prefer to do it if we can maybe get an HP upgrade afterwards, so we know we're not at like immediate risk of death, especially with me at the present moment maybe not playing the greatest Isaac I've ever played in my life. But uh, I did the requisite new father check. Um, you know, I, I went it. I can't believe we made it. Maybe I'm not as bad as I thought there. Um, I went into the, you know, the bedroom. Because you're supposed to, I, again, this is stuff that I say not to get too into the minutia, but just because people might not be aware. You, you get a crib or a bassinet for the baby. You put the crib or the bassinet in the bedroom um, because you're supposed to sleep in the same room. At least that's the current recommendation, is you sleep in the same room as the baby so you can respond to the baby is better for feeding. Is, you know, in case, you know, God forbid you, you hear a sound that scares the crap out of you, you're right there, you know. It's not like you had to hear it through a baby monitor crackling across the room or something. Um, so I'm gonna just buy the spirit heart, I think. Um, but yeah, so I, I went in and I checked it out. Mother is sleeping. Daughter is sleeping, not to sound like a, you know, Ridley Scott android. Is that a raised by? Yes, it's a raised by. I still haven't seen the season finale, okay? I've been a little busy this week, but it is my intention to, to finish up Raised by Wolves at some point. I mean, I... <laughs> you're gonna laugh. Because it's a very me story. But yesterday, Kate was, like, insanely tired, which, again, is completely fair. So I was like, hey, don't worry about it. I'm feeling really good. I'll take the baby, uh, you know, I'll go into the living room, I'll just watch some TV while the baby kind of sleeps uh, around me. And uh, you take a nap. And I was like, man, what am I going to watch on TV? So I watched a little Jeopardy, but then I was like, ooh, everybody's talking about this American murderer story. You know, let's let's go watch that. And it's a, it's a documentary about, like, a truly tragic <laughs> series of murders. Now, I, I, for a moment, I did think... Is it okay to watch this with a newborn? Then I thought about like all the stuff I read that was like a newborn. Like I'm just gonna be honest, she got no clue what's going on. She she doesn't know. You know what? It could, it, here's the the easiest way that I'm like I know that you know being around this documentary footage is not gonna have an effect. It's not violent to begin with, but uh, being around this documentary footage is not gonna have an effect on my daughter. Um, the nurse was like, hey, if you're having trouble soothing the baby, just put your pinky finger in her mouth. And I was like, what does that do? And they're like, oh yeah, she thinks it's like a breast and she'll just try to suck milk out of it. So, you know, that's the level, <laughs> not to be rude, but that's the level of sentience that we're dealing with right now. So I'm sure, you know, when she's like, you know, one, probably start to restrict what I'm watching on the television. Um, and plus, hey, we did watch three episodes of Jeopardy together. And I gotta tell you, she got her butt kicked. This kid, I don't know, she doesn't really take after her father. She didn't answer a single question correctly, nor answer in the form of a question, I might add. They were like, oh, you know, this uh, American president drafted the Bill of Rights. And she went, uh, wrong, it's James Madison. Pathetic. Anyway, I went up there and I was like, they're, you know... <laughs> I mean, what do you do, right? Like, they're both sleeping. They're both breathing. They seem good. I was like, it's none of my business. I'm out of here. But this, I, I'll tell you, I am very tired. Take a little nap. And I'm, uh, I, I mean, you won't... And this is still so early. Like, I, I can't really be like you know, braggadocious about the lack of sleep I'm working on. First off, there, there's two things I want to bring up. One is, um, because, you know, for obvious reasons, Kate feeds the child, uh, you know, I would say 11 out of 12 times daily. 
I guess they're not feeding 12 times daily, but you know, like five out of six times daily. I just naturally get more sleep at night than she does because of the fact that, you know, she's the one feeding the baby. Yeah, we'll take. I only wanted to take this if it was a too hard deal, but now I'm like, maybe with glowing hourglass you could do something here, but let's not risk it, you know? Everything's kind of okay. As long as we uh, don't run into serious trouble here. Which is totally possible based on the way I'm playing right now, but anyway. Um, so yeah, like I, I... People... I don't know. People don't trust you, you know? Like my parents, and you know, God bless them, obviously. But they're like, how are you feeling? And I'm like, honestly, I'm, like, I'm a little tired, but... I mean, I'm overtired. But apart from that, I feel like pretty fine. They're like, alright, well, you know... Why don't you just take a nap? And I'm like, and it's like I don't really feel like taking a nap right now. I'm not, I'm not putting on airs. I, I actually just am like in a good spot. That's a big win right there. But then the other thing is, you know, I I, I mean, I told you in advance, didn't I? I told you in advance. I I don't suffer as much from a lack of sleep as as some other people do. That's not to say I'm superhuman. I think I get hungrier. Oh my god, I have like. I want to eat constantly. It's it's a struggle. A lot of other people are in the same boat for sure. But there there are legitimately situations that happen like monthly to me. Where like we'll eat, let's say we ate at like 1 p.m. It's 3.30. Kate's like, are you hungry? And I'm like, no, not at all. I mean, we just ate. And then at like 3.38, I'm like, I'm thinking about a snack though. And it's not just like compulsive eating. Like there's something like in my gut is like... It's time. <laughs> I feel like a like a yearning in my in my GI tract. Not just like, oh, it would be nice to taste salt right now. Anyway. You know, different people they got different makeups in that in that way. That being said, I am also looking forward to, you know, four years from now when I get eight to nine hours of uninterrupted sleep. Um, you know, maybe like in a hotel room somewhere. I'm already thinking about that and like and then, but the worst part is I'm already ruining it for myself because I'm like, I bet I won't even be able to get eight or nine hours. I bet because I'll be so hyper used to waking up that I'll probably it, it, the situation hasn't even come to pass yet. You don't need to get you know too concerned about it. So one of the things that's come up a lot, like number one question, people are like, you know, how's I would say the number one question is people are like, how's Kate? Number two is, how's the baby? Number three is not, how's the father? <laughs> number three is, how were the cats reacting to the baby? And it has been a bit of a wild card. We didn't know, because, like, you know... I mean, there's a, there's a lot of kind of, like, variables, right? We were anxious more than anybody. Like, is you know, is our daughter going to be allergic to the cats? Are the cats going to uh, hate us for bringing this baby home? I mean, I hate to say it, if they do, it's kind of tough luck, you know? <laughs> I think we know where our priorities lie with that one. I, of course, I love Ruka, I love Tomo, but, you know, it presents a situation that's, uh... uh let me put it this way, and I'm not trying to cast, like, some kind of aspersion on it. It would be more trouble for them than it would be for us, I would, you know... We'd, we'd figure it out, we wouldn't just be like, alright, you know? Here you go, this is, uh, East Hastings Street, your new home. <laughs> that's... It's not funny. Okay, I'm very tired, alright? Anyway, um, the good news is, you, I do not want it. I do want it. The good news is, uh, everything appears to be fine. You know, Ruka, the, the first night we kept our door, uh, like, in the bedroom closed, just because, you know, you're, you're a wreck on the first day, at least. Excuse me. You don't, you don't want to add any extra complications, let's put it that way. Um, and that, you know, they, they meowed a lot, but they got over it. Um, then from the second day, you know, we, we have this, like, you know, you, you might consider it overkill, but, you know, you, better safe than... Well, I don't know, like, because this is a different subject, I guess. I was going to say better safe than sorry, but we got this thing called an outlet, which is like a smart sock. And it's it's like a, a, a Fitbit in the sense, like, it, it measures, like, heart rate and... We're going to get trapped in here, dude. It measures heart rate and, like, supposedly the baby's oxygen level and... You know, yada yada. So, 
the reason we got it is not necessarily to be like, oh, we're super concerned that something's gonna happen. It's more like, well, with this, we can actually get some sleep because it sounds an enormous, like, wake the F up alarm if, you know, something goes wrong. And you can see all the, the vitals and stuff from, from afar rather than just looking over every 10 minutes and being like, you know, is her chest moving up and down? So we, we got that and we, we've put that on her, so that when when we're both sleeping, you know, God forbid one of the cats was like, ooh, what's this? It's warm. It would be like, danger, danger, wake up. But uh, yeah, it's, it's actually been fine. Like Ruka, he sleeps in our room. He, he kind of still stays away from the baby a little bit, you know, because I mean, honestly, because she's loud. I, I said we had a good baby. You might be saying NL. I thought you said you had a good baby. What do you mean she's loud? Well, like, I think all babies are loud. You know, they, no, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say no, but, you know, most babies, I think, cry at regular intervals. They got a hunger cry, I, I pooped my diaper because I'm a poopy baby cry, you know, stuff like that. So they're, they're mostly like, you know, they, they kind of stay away. Ruka's gotten a little closer. Tomo, he's fine. Like, his demeanor is good, but he prefers to stay, for now, as far away from the baby as possible. So what ends up happening is like, you know, a couple times a day, maybe like I'll, I'll, you know, go to the kitchen and start doing some dishes and he'll come over and be like, pet me right now. And I'm like, all right, dude, chill. And then I pet him and he's like, all right, you're free to go. And then he goes back <laughs> into like the, the cat castle sort of thing that we got. And he just, uh, you know, he's, he's enjoying life. So yeah, nothing to worry about. I mean, again, we got, we got very lucky in, in, Pretty much every respect. Really nothing to complain about. I mean, again, it's like... You know, I mean, there's stuff to complain about. I am pretty tired. But at the same time, like, that's what you sign up for. Don't be the guy that is like, you know... Hey, how hot do you want your curry? Do whatever the hottest you got, double it. And then when it comes out, he's like... Ooh, it's... Mm, it's spicy! You know, like, you... We, you sign up to have a kid... You're like, we're gonna be tired. Get over it, you know? Not to... <laughs> Again, I'm I, I'm saying things that may come back to haunt me. I will probably complain about being tired. But I'm not... I would never be like... I, I hope I would never be like, you have no idea what it's like. As a parent. Something, 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 something. Anyway, so that's basically it. So that's, that's life right now. We're, we've settled into a nice routine. Um, it's still very surreal to me that we have a five-day-old child. It's, it's crazy as well how quickly you adapt. Like on day one, you know, we... we and, and again, you might say like, Oh, I, if I were in a situation, I wouldn't do this because I'm a, I know everything. But like, so day one in the hospital... Uh, the, the baby threw up a little bit. I know babies throw up and it's normal. But after she threw up, she was kind of going like... <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm going to press the call button to get the nurse in here. So you press the call button and it opens up like an intercom. They're like, hey, it's the nurse. How can I help you? And you're like, I think our baby is maybe going to die. And they're like, oh, okay, we'll be right over, sir. So they meander their way over. And they, you know, bless them. I'm, I sincerely... They've seen everything there is to see, so they look at the baby. They're like, the baby's fine, because I'm I've got her on her side and I'm kinda like burping her to get the you know, vomit out of her throat or whatever. And um the nurse, I swear to God, said you're not hitting her hard enough. <laughs> and I was that was kinda like like, oh, oh okay, I see what this is gonna be like then. So I, I think, you know, you, you you expect that babies are gonna be, you know, fragile and I guess they are, but also, you know, we were being so delicate, like when you put them into their little baby suits, you're going like, you're getting tweezers out, like, okay, now I'm just, I, can you please put your arm in here? Because I don't think it's gonna, I really need you to put your arm in here, sweetie. I don't want to grab it and possibly bend it backwards, and your arm's gonna grow backwards for the rest of your life, and it's gonna be all, it's gonna be my fault for doing this, but, um, so we clearly, by the way, are not using glowing hourglass. Let's, let's do a little bit of this then. Um, Anyway, so that that kind of like unlocked it for me. 
Like when the nurse was like, oh, just smack her. Not, not on the face, but like, you know, on the back. I was like, how how hard should I burp the, should I hit the baby on the back when I burp it? And she was like, oh, like you're hitting the bongo. And I was like, first off, we run in very different social circles. Because I don't know if I have ever hit a bongo. But I have seen Matthew McConaughey hit a bongo. So I was kind of, I was like, all right, you know, because I was just kind of going like, you know, tippy taps. She was like, nah, like this, bang, bang, bang. And the kid is just like, you know, <laughs> say they're loving life, but they're, they don't look like they're any worse for wear. So now, you know, when, when we're putting the kid in their clothing, it's a lot more like, it's not like, get in there, but it's a lot, you know, you're like, hey, could you put your arm in here? And she's like, I don't speak English. And then you're like, okay, I'm going to put your arm in here and do the do the bad cry if, it, if it's really hurting. Because sometimes, you know, there's like, you know, the baby will be like, wah. And you're like, okay, we're going to observe that. We're going to, we're going to take a wait and see approach to this situation right here. And sometimes it's like racking sobs and you're like okay something's wrong and you're like well, i mean dude i hate to say it because like again i think we've been blessed with an uncomplicated baby but as of right now i'm like it, you know you always hear about parents being like what do you want and i'm like right now apparently it can change later in the newborn's life but you know for week one there is no what do you want you, you do you a quick troubleshooting every single time uh how long has it been since they fed if more than two hours feed them we almost just died right there. We almost stepped on the spikes and died. <laughs> if uh, if it has not been more than two hours, you're going to check that uh, poo-poo diaper. There's probably going to be poo in there. Or pee. And they're going to change it and they're going to be fine. The third one is they're like, I don't know. It's just like random baby crying, right? So you, you just pick them up and kind of rock them a little bit. And usually they're like, I'm good to go. And by there, I mean the one I've interacted with <laughs> as an adult and am now acting like an authority, but... So yeah, I'm, I'm basically like a parental trader right now. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm not like all those other parents who are like, it's so hard. I'm like, it's easy, dude. Just, just have a baby that is like a computer and it's no problem. You'll, you'll be fine. We should, we should have used Yara somewhere in there. I, do, I mean, you, you know, I don't need to tell you. I'm a little bit zonked. <laughs> if we could just come out of today with two dubs, that would be like a huge win in my book. Thank you. I appreciate that. I shouldn't have ever used... I'm, okay, sure. Why not? Um, that, that would be a huge win in my book. If we could just come out with, with having done... The bare minimum on a couple of very, very good runs that was required. Anyway. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's the kind of thing where, it, again... I mean, Dan was telling me this in advance, too. But, you know, I I said I was going to take, like, a month off for paternity leave. It was the, It's exactly the same situation as the week that I took off before the baby came, but it's kind of inverted. It's not that there's not a lot of stuff to do. But it's just that when you've done the stuff that you're going to do, what else are you going to do? You know, I, don't get me wrong. I could not be recording today. What would I be doing? I mean, the baby and Kate are asleep right now. What would I be doing? I don't know. I'd be on the couch watching TV or something like that, which would... I... I, I okay. Um, I'd, I'd be on the couch watching TV or something like that. And don't get me wrong. I will be doing a lot of that later today. <laughs> and especially as, as Kate sleeps more and more, I'll probably, you know, take the baby and be like, okay, time to watch Ridley Scott's androids get, uh, you know, eviscerated and explode into a pile of white goo. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like I might as well, you know, as long as I'm feeling good. I, I, I listen to myself more than other people. Other people will always, I don't know, this is a bad attitude, I guess, but... Other people will always tell you to work less, is, is my experience. At least online. Like, take all the time you need. And I'm like, I already took all the time I need. I feel good. You know what made me feel better is knocking out a couple of TBOIs. Then they're like, you got a problem. And I'm like, yeah, my, you, my problem is you. You got to go back to the school of Nunya. Nunya dang beeswax.
Anyway, as, I mean, I'm not out of anecdotes. I'm just like, the anecdotes are so stuffed. <laughs> and again, like, the whole week is like a huge blur, dude. I mean, it's like... Today's Saturday. I think it goes without saying, it doesn't really feel like a Saturday. It feels like some kind of day from like an alternate dimension. Like, I, the, the easiest way that I could describe what I'm feeling right now is just like, I don't know, you know, you know how you feel, like, think of like the most emotional uh, movie you've ever seen, or like TV show you've ever seen. Uh, and then like, think about what it was like, you were kind of in like a weird haze after that emotionally, because you're just overwhelmed, you know, and it, you, you, it like changes your personality for a time, right? So it's an element of that. Plus, legitimately, on a physiological level, I feel like I'm in a, like a time zone that's 10 off from where I actually live. Like, I feel like I'm in, uh, like, Eastern Russia right now. Like, I don't even know what time it is. What, what time is it? Is 2.52 p.m.? If you told me that it was 3 a.m., I would be like, of course it's 3 a.m. You'd have to be an idiot to think it's not 3 a.m. And then if you went like, oh, when I said 3 a.m., I meant 3 p.m. I'd be like, that's what I meant, too. This feels exactly like 3 p.m. It's just, you know, you're you're emotionally out of sorts, but, but very, very rewarded as well. Don't get me wrong. And, like, I don't know. It's just weird. Like, my, my personality changed a little bit in, like, an instant. Like, as soon as we got home, I was, like, you know, from the hospital... You would think that I'd be like, let's get some sleep. I was like, we gotta do some dang dishes. There were like three cups in the sink. I'm like, this is outrageous. You think I'm gonna raise my daughter in a household that has three cups in the sink? I honestly think, and I'm, I'm not that, you know, much of a cleanliness obsessed person. But I honestly think that one of the hard parts for us is gonna be adjusting the idea that like, you're gonna be busy with the kid, maybe relax on the housework a little bit. It's gonna be a lot of, uh, you know, tall order to have a... A newborn, whatever. Like, a newborn doesn't make messes. The messes are made to accommodate it, but... It's, uh... You know, it's gonna be a hard instinct to turn off, for sure. Anyway, it's basically that. It, you know, it's just, like, the most emotional thing you've ever experienced in your life, combined with, like, the most tired and hungry you've ever been. <laughs> but even that... You're gonna think that this is insanity. You're gonna think this is, like, the dumbest, most idiotic thing that anyone has ever said. But two things have really prepared me for the, this newborn period. One is... Uh, living in Korea. Because I remember what it was like to just be completely like, I don't know what's going on. And also jet lagged. And also like, you know, I mean, it was just an unfamiliar territory. I mean, I guess like any overseas travel that, that makes you jet lagged is that. It fits the bill. And then the other thing is like spending, you know, 80% of my Sundays hung over in university. Not to put too fine a point on it, but like I'm like, man, this reminds me of, like, what 2008 felt like. Except, I'm only really tired and maybe a little bit hungry. I don't have the nausea. So, if anything, I'm like, you know, things are looking up. <laughs> so, I, I honestly think that, it, you know, experiencing a lot of... Uh, we'll just buy this one. Uh, a lot of... Uh, bad sleep before in my life and persevering is uh is helping out a lot right now that's that's my two cents i'm just gonna be real with you by the way i that's how messed up we are right now we're actually taking pills but secondarily i have no idea like if you were like how's this run going i have no idea this is random neurological firing right now um I think it's good. We have 2020 and my tears are big. I know that we came back with Judas's Shadow. We got Gimpy. Okay, so that there's some cool beans there. But I also appear to have low HP. What's going on with that? I don't know, man. I, I'm just like, I'm out of sorts. Again, this is day five. <laughs> they had me drive home on day two. What were they thinking? Are you insane? 
Look, I oh, that's really good. I know they got other stuff to worry about at the hospital. Okay, I don't know. Did I miss? No, I didn't miss the item room. If I missed it, whatever. Okay, I got I got other stuff on the brain right now. I really think like, and this is, I ha it's what I'm about to say is ignorant. Okay, I don't know if parents leaving the hospital are more likely to get into like a minor traffic accident than you know the average person. Because here's the thing. Um, was I tired when I was driving home? Oh, yeah. Like, pretty exhausted, without a doubt. Um, but on the other hand, I also was imbued with this unbelievable sense of the responsibility that had fallen on my shoulders. I don't think I've ever driven, like, more slowly and safely home than, than that first drive in my entire life. Now, if a wild animal had jumped out onto the road... 200 feet away from me. I don't know if my eyes could have sent the message to my brain fast enough to stop. We would have been picking fur out of the grill, okay? But in terms of the actual mechanics of the drive, it was very slow and safe. I do feel like, though, and maybe this is, a, you're gonna be like, oh, a classic Canadian thinking everything should be just paid for. The hospital, I really feel like the hospital should, like, pay for your Uber. <laughs> I'm not taking that this time. Look, I mean, I would rather... We have we have a car seat, obviously. I would rather drive home as well. But I, I sort of feel like, you know, the hospital should be like, don't worry about your car. I don't know. Now that I think about it for more than two seconds, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. Because, like, if you go into labor, what are you going to do? Be like, oh, sorry, honey. Uh, it's surge pricing. I don't know. And then, you know, if you drive your car there because you're in labor, but they make you take an Uber home because you're tired, how are you going to go get your car back? You're going to take an Uber to the hospital like a week later and then be like, that's my car. And who's paying for the parking? I guess it just makes sense the way they're doing it. They, they've done it for a while. Basically, I'm just saying I was tired. But there's a great... I, I don't know if I've ever seen a more polite parking lot etiquette than the hospital parking lot near, like, the maternity ward. Like, we were driving through the parking lot, and then, like, there were people walking on the road in front of us, just bleary-eyed zombies. And then, you know, I kind of, like, inched closer to them, and they looked back, and they were like, Oh, we're sorry. And I was like, Don't worry. It's okay, and they're like, we get, we're all, you're all in it together, right? Shared a lot of knowing glances with the other fathers in the maternity ward. Do I want, I, dude, I don't know, just buy as many spirit hearts as you can hold. <laughs> like, that's, we're, we're on, like, emergency power, you know? This is like when your car is almost out of gas. If the person in the passenger seat was like, Ooh, do you want to go on a detour to see Canada's largest nickel? You would be like, We need to get to the gas station, or we're going to die in Sudbury. I don't know if Sudbury has a reputation for being, you know, crime heavy. I've never been. I know Quill lives there. I, I know two things about Sudbury, which is actually one thing. They're famous for having... Uh, a statue of a nickel, and they're famous for mining. You won't guess what mineral. Anyway. What do we got? I mean, here's the thing. Nuns have it might be better, but I don't know what I'm doing, and spear and shield seems like a good combo. That's what I'll say about that. So yeah, we're, I'm looking forward to all the all the anecdotes we're gonna generate. I feel like I've already forgotten like almost all the ones that happened to me. Like there there was a bunch. Like I don't even want to make it into this because obviously it's a hot button issue. But like, don't I, I want to be very clear? Don't get me wrong. I am very pro having measures to stem the tide of COVID cases. But we're almost, like, as some of the parts of BC, it's almost reaching, like, security theater to some extent. Like, 
so here's the and it's again it's a first world problem I'm, I'm happy we're doing relatively okay although not as well as I would like um, but like most of the cases that seem to be happening in British Columbia are due to like and it's a hospital right like so it's risky but I'm, I, I'm not ignorant to that but um, you know most of the cases seem to happen in one of two ways um, you know there's like a seniors home where there's nothing you can do if somebody gets it like everybody's getting it um, the other case is people are like well, I know that COVID's a big deal, but this is my wedding, and they invite 200 people to, you know, sit in a phone booth together, and then they're like, well, dude, how could we have known, right? So I'm not saying you can't get it, obviously, in any other circumstance, but I'm just saying, like, you know, some of the precautions you had to take. I'm glad they let me into the hospital, for one, because I think it was a genuine potential question um, whether or not it would have happened. I don't know. They, I guess if they, if they kept restaurants open but didn't let the father of the child come into the hospital to see the delivery, they'd probably start to face some questions, I would say. But, like, there's stuff that is just insane. Like, to get into the hospital, I had to answer screening questions every time. Big whoop. Except, a couple of the times, there just wasn't anybody sitting in the chair that's supposed to ask you the security questions, so I just walked in. All right. Like... Again, I guess like anything helps, but at the same time, we're kind of all in this together. If you, if you're like, yeah, I want you to screen everybody that comes into the hospital, except on your lunch break, you know, then you're kind of putting everybody at risk, and you know, the people that follow the guidelines get inconvenienced, but are exposed to the same degree as everybody else who is just like, I'll do what I want. So that's frustrating. Um, and then the other thing is like, Kate's parents dropped off some soup in a thermos. But we, there's a fridge, but they were like, hey, there's a fridge here. We put juice in it every day, but you're not allowed to use the fridge for anything else. Normally, it would be fine, but because of COVID, you can't use the fridge. I was like, because of COVID? I can't just, like, Lysol wipe the thermos and put it in there? Instead, I gotta be like, well, thanks for the soup. You can have one bowl, and then we gotta pour the rest down the sink. I don't know, man. It's just, it's just weird is what it is. <laughs> I'm not, uh, and again, that that's uh, the dry cough of a uh, a man who has not slept and is talking more than he's talked recently. It's not a prophetic thing. Um, I hope, but either way, just one of those things where you're like, man, oh man. And it, it, it doesn't really make me mad at like the hospital or anything like that. It, it definitely does make me mad at the people who like didn't take it seriously for the you know, intervening six months between when it really hit the fan and now, which I would describe as the period where people just kind of got bored with it and are like, whatever. I know it's a big deal, but you only graduate from uh, the 11th grade one time, so yeah, I'm gonna have a party. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. I'm, I'm, and the, the other thing that was like annoying for me is there was like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't even know how much I want to get into it. But, you know, I, at the hospital, there's a lot of downtime. So Kate was like, you know, hey, find, like, a coffee shop. I was walking to the coffee shop in this hospital and, you know, it, on the outside. Um, there's, uh, like, different wings of the hospital. And they had one area that was like, hey, we're taking, we're doing, like, COVID tests here. And the, the COVID tests, they won't let more than, like, three people inside of the room at any given time so there was a huge lineup on the sidewalk outside and like 70 percent of the people on the sidewalk weren't wearing masks and i'm like you're in the line to see if you have the thing what are you doing but meanwhile i can't put uh my mother-in-law's soup in the fridge because it's freaking it's a biohazard it, it's just i don't know i'm like i just feel like the the Measures should be like the same across the board, I guess, is where I'm at. You know what? It reminds me of like being at the airport where, like, you know, for a long time, it depends on the airport you're at now, but for a long time, you uh, had to take your shoes off when you went through security because of the guy who tried to light his shoes on fire in the, in the flight. It's not funny. I would be scared to death if it happened like a, on a flight that I was on but then you know because one person tried to light their shoes on fire um, I know the shoes were like a homemade bomb okay it's just funnier to say it this way but because one guy lit his shoes on fire um, or tried to you know billions of, of passengers worldwide have had to take their shoes off over the intervening 20 years um, but here's something they don't tell you if you're in first class they're like keep your shoes on sir so I can only imagine that the philosophy was that, I mean, if this person wanted to cause harm, they 
would want to do it at the cheapest rate possible, then <laughs> they wouldn't... Come on. You really think that this shadowy criminal organization is smart enough to spend an extra 500 bucks on a ticket to make their dastardly plan work? It's just the kind of thing where you're like, it, again, I, under, I understand the safety measures. If the safety measures are keeping us all safe. But with something like an infectious disease, when, you know... 80% of people go through the safety measures, and then the other 20%, they're like, man, don't sweat it. You know, that's them, like, 100% of us are unsafe, so so can I just keep the soup in the fridge? I'm not really asking to, like, sneeze down your throat or something like that. I just, you know, can I just keep the... I'll wipe down the thermos with, like, a Lysol wipe or whatever, or maybe we could, we could partition the fridge and, like, you know, there's 10 people in the ward. We could split it into tenths or something like that, or be like, you get the fridge between the hours of 6 and 8 a.m. or something. I'm not asking for that much. I just kind of... I just want to put the soup in the fridge because, you know, my wife is convalescing right now and I don't want her eating old soup. And I gotta tell you, I don't know if I would call it stealing. <laughs> I, I took a lot from that fridge. Every day, they put in like, you know, a bunch of juice, a bunch of like single serving cheese. I must have eaten like 12 of those cheeses over the course of two days, dude. I was like, if I'm staying here, I'm going to get my money's worth. Which is kind of zero, but kind of like a lot more than zero, so... And I gotta tell you, some of the best cheese I've ever tasted. It was merely medium cheddar. Because it's illegal, I don't know if you knew this, it's illegal at a hospital to have flavor. Flavor is considered an infectious agent. I was losing it, dude, every time I looked at that hotel food menu. And again, it's a completely bougie first world complaint. Uh, they don't have the kind of sandwiches I want. But when they were like, make your own sandwich bar. Choose between, this is real, tuna salad, egg salad, chicken salad. I was like, I don't want to know what's going on inside of that kitchen. You got, I don't, not to be rude, you got no real food? Because you know, you're not getting the homemade chicken salad it came in a bag from Gordon's food services or Sodexo or something like that and they squeeze it onto the bread I'm like you don't, you don't have any sandwich that doesn't have mayonnaise as a principal ingredient it, w it was a little cursed but then like the second night I was looking at the thing and I was like man Kate has the soup so what am I gonna pretend she wants so that I can get some food <laughs> for free I was like, I'll take the hummus plate. And it was a bunch of just like, you know, they open up like a bag of baby carrots and like some Saba hummus. And I was like, this is the best thing on the menu, dude. This rules. Oh, bill me. I buy it at the grocery store. Bag of baby carrots, thing of Saba hummus. Um, I don't know. We're looking at like maybe eight bucks Canadian total. Follow that with the, you know, a $400 fee to get somebody to open the bag and put it on a plate and bring it to me. There you go, $408, all right? I'm not going to be happy about it. Do you take checks? Either way, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. I'm going to go take a nap. See you next time.